FBI crews raid a home in Waterford with apparent connections to the alleged cult. The FBI raiding the home of Nancy Saltzman, who helped co-found Nexium. You have 12 FBI agents raid your house for 11 hours. And then you get arrested and put in a cell. You feel like you must have done something wrong, because how else does something like this happen to you? The world is left with this view of you that you know isn't you. Or how could it have been? This is crazy. Imagine you spent 22 years trying to build something that you fully believed in and you thought was good and everybody thinks it's the devil's work. I thought that if people could understand each other and the human struggle, we could resolve any problems, any problems in the world. And for people to believe it was just a big scam of a sex cult. It's so horrendous. I spent 20 years trying to make the world a better place, and this is where I ended up. There were bad things that happened. But it doesn't mean that everybody who's getting blamed for the bad things actually did the bad things. I think everybody just assumes, you know, I knew everything and I should have known everything. But when everything started to blow up, I didn't know why, really. And then my whole company was destroyed and my whole life fell apart. The sex cult was DOS, it was over here. It was Keith's thing. My company didn't need to be destroyed. But it was. That's not right. I think I probably feel angrier at Sarah than I do at Keith, which is not rational, I guess, but... I mean, I think Keith is just the way he is. It really does look like a serious amount of delusional narcissism. Um, and in that moment, you know, it's sort of like Nancy's the ultimate victim of everybody. And again, understand that is something that Ranieri um, promoted as well. But as I said, um, that's just a snippet of, of, of many, many interviews that, that, you know, lasted a long time. Um, it's, it's also fucked up that Nancy's upset about the company falling apart. Um, it, it is funny because we all walked away from everything we'd done because it was the right thing to do. So I, I just think that's interesting. It's an interesting, it's interesting to try to figure out like the kind of mind that says that, that that's the big concern. I really have not looked at this in a very long time. It's running, let's see what's in it. Have you ever had an experience where you were called upon to do something, but you really didn't know how to do that thing? How do you feel when you have such an experience? Most people say fearful, insecure, like they're on shaky ground, because we are. This is funny, this is an O Magazine. I coached the art director. It says Nancy Salzman, president of Nexian Corp, offers the coaching and motivational workshops. These are all key. 
He didn't want us to throw away anything he ever wrote. When we were creating the intensive, he would draw these on the floor of my house. A causes B in the past, event B, event A, uh, the future. So we have nothing to do with past events. I don't know what he was trying to say, but we laminated it. 20 years is right here, 20 years of curriculum. I used to see my EM clients in this room. I get a whole load of shit. Never in a million years would I have ever imagined the life I lived being the prefect of ESP. No, honestly, what I have to say is strange is, is watching how joyful she was about the memories of everything there. Because you see, when you understand that everything that happened was the on-ramp to horrible things, the things that felt so good don't feel so good anymore. It's sort of like, and I keep saying this, you know, if, if, if you are in an abusive relationship and the guy brings flowers and flowers and flowers and flowers and flowers, but then does horrible, horrible things to you, it's not like you keep on dreaming about how wonderful the flowers are because the flowers get tainted. They don't feel so good anymore. So it's weird to see her go into the house and be so in, in reverie about all the wonderful things because all the wonderful things are what the subversion of all the wonderful things is what led to the horrible things. And then you realize the horrible things were always there. Always. Everything was leading there. It was the slope down to this fucking hideous human Armageddon. So that's weird. It's weird to see her so thrilled by it. The thing, for example, with sexual abuse, in some states, it's there, there are ages. There's the age of consent. Some states it's 17. Some parts of the world it's 12. So what's abuse in one area is not abuse in another. But what is it really? Often when you counsel people who were, say, children of what you call abuse, you know, the little child, some little children are perfectly happy with it until they find out what happened in later in life. In other words, at the time, they didn't know it was bad. They didn't know anything about it was bad. Later they grow up and they find out that it was actually something that was bad. In that case, is it more society that's abusing them? Because society says it's bad, but they didn't know it was bad. In other societies in the past, like in Rome, the standards were completely different. But we are not in Rome, and we should know that. So you want me to comment on it now? Yeah. Um... When I look at it now, I have certain feelings about it that I didn't have then. Um, I feel a lot of remorse that I read that. Very few parts of the curriculum that I think intentionally were put in there to, to to promote Keith's beliefs or his own behaviors or whatever. That, I think, probably was. And it is abuse to ask a child to make a decision that they can't possibly make because they don't understand what it will mean. Uh, you know, it's hard to process this. I think it takes a long time, and I haven't had therapy. I have thought that it would give me a way of just talking it all through. This is the piece that I really hope that you can articulate the curriculum 
And the way the organization was built was clearly to take control over people's lives. You know, it, it was designed to control people. Now, that is not what you believed, I'm sure. That is not what you believe today, probably. Well, I don't know that the curriculum did it as much as Keith did it. One of the main tactics that is a hallmark of psychological manipulation is to tear someone down, but then have the answer for how they can fix themselves. That was him. That's cooked in to the trainings that you designed. I find myself feeling resistant to some of the things she thinks about. ESP, I feel resistant. I hope it's not true. Well, it would really break my heart if it was true. Because if the thing that I thought that I loved the most and I thought did the most good was really damaging people, I think that would be very hard. I don't know. I don't know how I could come back from that. When Nancy is struggling with the thought that the curriculum is somehow different from Ranieri, um, she's, she's, she's trying to keep separate Ranieri's depravity and who he really is and, and the curriculum, and, and she thinks they're different, but they're not. They're not different. This is the thing she can't see, which many people couldn't see, by the way. Many people had that struggle. The realization that you have been going in the opposite direction of what you thought you were going, that, that what you thought was good is actually bad, that whole turning upside down of your world and your psyche and your worldview is, is an absolutely shattering experience. And one that I don't envy anybody having been through it myself. Because it's, it does staggering things to your psyche. You feel literally like you're going insane and you have no solid ground to stand on at all. Um, because everything you thought was true was a lie. And what happens is in that moment, on a very, very deep visceral level, the foundation that you thought was extremely solid is like quicksand and it's moving and it's doing all kinds of bizarre things. And for Nancy... This is her sort of bridge over the River Kwai that she just can't let go of the fucking bridge. Um, her creation. She can't let go of it. What she doesn't understand about the curriculum that she created is that it was data mining for weakness. And then it was comparing, comparing that to an impossible standard so that everybody started to feel like they were failing. And so you, you began to dug, dig deeper and deeper into your own failures um, because you thought that if you dug deeper and deeper into your failures, somehow that would make things better. But all that happened is the chasm between who you thought you were, this horrible piece of shit, and this ideal self that you were being sold became larger and larger and larger, and everybody got more and more fucked up and depressed and psychotic. That, that aspect of the curriculum, that was the funnel that in the end caused all the abuse. It's going to take you some time to heal. Highlight the aha moments, the times when you may feel guilty because you could have stepped in or you promoted things that hurt others. He kept sending me in. I felt 
so lost and and I had no one to talk to and I don't know if I did good things or bad things I didn't know anymore because I I couldn't tell I didn't know I didn't know what was right and wrong anymore because he kept saying that I'm gonna die if you don't if you don't do this you don't understand how this affects my health you have to go do this and I would just keep going in and going in and going in I mean, maybe that's how I participate. That's why I participated. I was trying to put it back together all the time. I was trying to make up for what he was doing. I don't know. I just, I don't know. But I guess that's, that's at the root of the whole thing. I feel so guilty because I couldn't do better. <laughs> I don't know. These people are going to come to my sentencing and maybe I should go to jail because I, this is what I did. Maybe it's, you know, for three years I have to sit and be in jail to, to make up for the, 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 the damage that I did by, by, by empowering him. The moment where Nancy starts to fall apart on camera and she says she doesn't know whether she's doing good things or bad things. That is what this kind of psychosis, this, this psychosis-inducing brainwashing does. It puts you in such a mind spin that you can't tell up from down. This kind of scrambling, you know, it, to, to the mind is, is one of the, the, the mechanisms that ends up in a very, very dark place. When I watch her cry, I can, I, I can relate in the sense that, you know, the horror of what you wake up to is so fucking awful. And for me, the wake up was my, my psyche cracked. And that's what it looked like, you know, like sobbing from the soul. Um, so I, in that way, I can relate um, to that level of pain. What I'm not clear about though is, is, is what is she crying for? Is she crying for herself or is she crying for everybody else? Cause I mentioned this before, you know, a number of people had given Nancy feedback over the years and I gave her feedback once and, and the, the response was always the same. It was basically just that kind of crying. And I began to realize like with certain kinds of personalities, like if you say something to them and they feel hurt almost as a distraction, they start crying and crying and crying and crying. But what they're crying about is themselves. They're feeling victimized. They're not necessarily crying about the thing that happened and the other people that were hurt. So for me, I don't know because I don't live inside of her in that moment. I don't know what it's about, but it did get me thinking about that. She is much more defensive or defending Keith. And as the episodes go on, you reveal a lot more about her past with him and her real feelings about him. I'm curious what happened from her defending him to then opening up and telling all the reveals that happened in the finale. Time, discovery, where she was reading text messages, letters in his own words. Um, so she knew that to be true. There was a process that she went through, I think, of discovering for herself information that she didn't know and reevaluating her experience and her decision-making and with a fuller set of facts. I think it was a combination of being away from the community, except for, I mean, she had contact a lot of contact with Lauren and her two daughters, but she was away from Keith. I think that she had time to think, process, and reevaluate the last 20 years that she had been through. The conversation about Nancy continues to rage on on Twitter. Even after every, every episode, it's a lot of people very upset with her. And it's, is she a victim or is she an enabler? So, I mean, where do you stand on that? Look at any, um, any type of abuse, right? hurt people hurt and abuse is repeated, right? And there are victims become victimizers. I feel like if you come down very hard on people who are victim victimizers after they have 
really come forward with what they know and been remorseful about it, then how are we encouraging people to take responsibility for serious mistakes that, that they make? We're, we're all human. We all make mistakes. And I think one of the biggest problems in our society is that we don't take enough personal responsibility for our mistakes. It happens in every field. Unless we can provide somewhat of a safe space for people that have taken that step to be remorseful and to really look at what they've done, then we're not encouraging people to take any kind of personal responsibility for what they've done.